In this tutorial, we will learn about text fields in WX widgets. We will start with the basics, creating the fields, enabling tab navigation, and handling basic events. Then we will build a fully functional signup form with password validation and live feedback displayed in the labels below the text fields. To do this, we will go deep into creating our own validators and, as always, explain how to avoid many possible traps and pitfalls along the way. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure you like and subscribe and let's begin. Let's start with a simple application. Here we have the application class and the main window class deriving from WX Frame. The only thing we have for now is a simple main menu using default copy cut paste commands. This will become useful later when we connect our text fields with the standard editing actions. We create two text fields for the username and email. We put a static text label explaining every field and then we add the field itself creating a new WX text control. After that we create a simple vertical sizer to arrange our controls and we run the app. Currently, the only way to switch between the fields is by using the mouse. Generally, users expect to be able to hit tab on the keyboard to move to the following field. The simplest way to get the tab navigation in WX widgets is to put your controls in WX panel, which supports this feature. While implementing this, we will also ensure our form is centered when the user resizes the window. If you want more details on how this works and how to do basic layout in WX widgets, I recommend my video on the topic. Note the size here. We use an absolute width value while keeping the height at default. This will ensure we use the default height for single line fields, which is different for every operating system. Also, note that we set the size of only one field. The other fields will expand to the same width when we use WX Expand in our sizer. Since we will add more fields and each field will use the same parameters when adding to the sizers, we group them in a vector and add the vector LMS to the sizer in a loop to reduce code duplication. Finally, we set up the centering, include the vector header, and run the app. Now we can navigate between the fields by hitting the tab. Also, the form expands and centers nicely when the user resizes the window. Let's explore the events that the text fields emit. The most important one is the text event, which fires every time the text inside the field changes. We put a simple console out log in the handler and after running the app, we can see that the string in the event payload holds the entire text field contents. The event itself fires every time the contents of the field change, whether as a result of the user typing on the keyboard or inserting a character in any other way, for example using an emoji picker. 
This is not necessarily the case for other events emitted by WX text control. Let's bind to the char event. Here we get a key event object and we can extract more information than before, for example the exact code of the character typed or the modifiers pressed, like the ALT key. We add the log to see what kind of data we get in this event and then we bind a similar handler to the key down event. We will see that there are some differences between these. Note that we also call skip in both handlers so that the text field itself can correctly process these events. Let's see what happens when we run the app and type A. The key event reports key code 65 while the char event returns 97. 65 is an ASCII code of a capital A, which is the key we hit. 97 is the code for lowercase a, and that's the character our keystroke generated. So the key events are closer to hardware, reporting the keys that the user hit, as opposed to char events, which report what character was produced by that keystroke. We can observe this behavior when I hit the ALT key. No char or text events are generated, because no character is produced. We get the key event though, indicating that a key has been hit. Similarly, when I hit ALT-J, producing the delta character, the key event reports the key code of the J key, while the char event returns the code for the resulting Unicode character. Special keys like the left arrow key, are also reported only by the key event. Note that when inserting text without using the keyboard, for example using the emoji picker or pasting data from the clipboard, we do not get any key or char events, only the text event from the text field. This will become important when discussing validators, as we will see in a moment. As stated in the documentation, validators in WX widgets serve three primary purposes. Transferring data between controls and variables, validating user data in the control, filtering data that comes to the control. Let's start with the last one. Here we add a simple text validator to our field, making the field only accept digits. Well, at least in theory. As long as we type using the keyboard, the text field won't let any letters or other non-digit characters pass through, which is great. But we can copy and paste text without problems, and even insert emojis. That's because the text validator uses the char event described before to determine if the inserted character should be accepted. That does not mean these filters are useless. We can still call validate to determine if the field's contents are correct. Just remember that users can insert any character into the field, even if you use filtering text validators. Another feature of validators is transferring data between controls and variables. Here we add a variable for the username and set up a submit button for our form. We bind the click handler to our button and output the value of our name variable in the handler method. To connect the text field to the variable, we provide its address in the validators constructor. We set the variable and call transfer data to window. This will transfer the data from all the variables connected with the validators to the corresponding controls in one call. Similarly, to update the variables with the values from the controls, we call transfer data from window. 
And here's how this works. Our variable is up to date, even though we haven't explicitly called set or get value on the text control itself. The data transfers happen through the validator. Let's continue building our app. We will add password fields for a standard signup form and then implement more complex validators that check if the passwords meet specific criteria. The validators will also update the hint labels on the fly so the user gets immediate feedback. Before adding more fields, we fix a problem you might have experienced on Windows, where we get an ugly grey background when resizing the window. As a workaround, we set the frame color to match the panel color. We then proceed to add the remaining fields. We need to apply a special WXTE password style for the password fields to ensure the text will be masked and not visible on the screen. The hint field will contain live feedback for the user about the password requirements. If the password is too short or does not contain particular characters, we will display an error message and change the color to red. The label will turn green if the password meets our requirements and show the appropriate message. Similarly, for the password repeat field, we want to make sure that it matches the password field and we will use the password repeat hint label to notify the user about a mismatch. The notes text field uses the multi-line style to allow the user to use the enter key to add multiple paragraphs. Notice that this time we set the field's height to be fixed while specifying that the width should be left at default. This will allow the control to stretch horizontally with the other text fields managed by the same sizer. We add the controls we created to our sizer and run the app. The fields work. We can type the text as expected, but nothing is validated and our hint labels do not respond to changes in the password fields. We need validators for that. For now, let's use the default text validators to update the string variables and finish our submit button handler. We will change the text validators to custom validators soon. In the onSubmit handler, we check if the text field's contents are correct. First, we check if the required fields are not empty and then we call the validate method on our window. This function iterates over the attached validators and calls each other's validate method, so we don't have to do it for every text field. In the end, we print the variables. This is purely for demonstration purposes. In a real application, you might want to, for example, send these values to a server endpoint preferably hashing the password so it's not sent in plain text. You can see our checks working, showing the error if any of the required fields are empty. If the validation passes, we see the values printed in the console. Let's add some custom validators. We have two fields that display a hint label beneath them. That label should change value and color when the corresponding text field's value changes. We can generalize this behavior in a validator class like this. All validators need to derive from WX validator, just as our class does. 
For constructing the validator, we need a pointer to the hint label to be updated when the text field changes, and a pointer to a variable for transfer from and to the control. It's crucial to correctly handle copying for the WX validator subclasses, because WX widgets always clones the validator when it's attached to a control. In our case, we need to bind to text events in the constructor, also after cloning. That's why we implement a custom copy constructor. There is also an abstract clone method that needs to be implemented by the subclasses so that the cloned object is of the correct class. Next come the transfer methods responsible for handling the connection between the string variable and the text field value. These methods simply read or write the text field's value. The validate method is called by the Windows validate function we used in the onSubmit handler. Update validation label is the helper function we will call every time the text changes to update the text and color of our hint static text. The heart of this class is the check validity method. There, the subclasses will implement their algorithm to check if the text field's content is valid. The behavior will differ for the password validator and the password repeat validator. Our validator reacts to the text events, ensuring the label is updated every time the text changes, no matter the source of the change. With this superclass, implementing the password validators is easy. The first one, the password strength validator, checks if the password contains the required characters and ensures the minimal password length is reached. The second one, the password match validator, is interesting because it requires two text fields. In the constructor, we provide only the source field to be checked against. The other field will be assigned by the framework when calling set validator. So if we call set validator on the password repeat field, providing the first password field in the constructor, the get text entry method will return the password repeat field and the source control variable will point to the original password field. Because of this, we can compare the contents of these two and return the result in the check validity method. To use these validators, we head to the main file, add the necessary includes, and simply replace the text validators for the password fields with the custom ones. We then test the behavior, changing the passwords and observing how the hint labels react. There is one problem. Our password match validator object does not seem to respond to the changes in the first password field. Before we try to solve this, let's make sure we understand how the validator events are processed. In our custom validator base class, we bind to the text event, but we haven't provided any control ID. So how does the framework know to which controls the event handler should react? Well, a validator gets special treatment in the event processing algorithm. If a control has a validator, it gets to process that control's events before dynamic event handlers or handlers bound by the event table. So our event handler works only for the control associated with the validator. One might be tempted to fix this by adding the validator to the event handlers for the password control. This setup will ensure that we get events from both fields, from the password repeat field, thanks to the validator event handling mechanism described above, and from the first password field, because we explicitly added an event handler. This works, but only partially. We do some experiments and see that the labels are updated correctly, no matter which field we use.
Unfortunately, when we close the app, we get a crash. The reason is that the WX window based destructor checks for dangling event handlers before destroying the validator. So this approach won't work. What we can do instead is to bind to the text event in our frame. This is not ideal as this code should really be a part of the internal logic of the validator, but because of how the WX window base destructor works, there is no way around it. This time, when we run the app, we get the correct behavior and we do not get any crashes. We now have a functioning signup form with live password validation providing immediate feedback to the user. We also put safeguards in the submit button click handler, making sure the data entered by the user is correct before we try to process it further. Let's move on to the last part of this tutorial, where we tackle the problem with clipboard operations in text fields. The copy, cut, paste operations work perfectly well on Mac, whether we trigger them from the keyboard, context menu or main menu. Also, the menu items are correctly updated, for example, cut and copy are grayed out when there is no selection. On Windows, clipboard operations work well if triggered from the context menu, but the main menu seems broken, with the app not reacting to the edit commands. A similar situation occurs in Linux. This is because the clipboard events are handled natively on Mac, but not on other systems, where the standard WX menu and WX update UI events are used. Let me explain. When the user clicks a menu item, that action triggers a menu event. The update UI events are triggered when the framework needs to update the appearance of a UI element, for example, a menu item. So this is two-way communication. The control gets the menu event, for example, the copy menu commands, and can react by copying its contents to the clipboard. When the control receives the update UI event, it can change the appearance of a menu item, for example, graying out the cut and copy commands when there is no selection. If we examine the WX text control sources, we see that the text control handles all standard menu items and UI update items. The contents of these event handlers also look correct. So what's wrong? Why nothing happens when we use the edit menu? The answer is simple. The framework sends these events to the mainframe, not our text fields. The standard solution is to receive the events in the frame, find the focus text field and propagate the event there. This can be done by overriding the process event method. We check if the event we got is of the required type, find the focus child control and forward the event there. Because the command events are propagated from the child control to the parent, we can run into an infinite loop. After we forward the event to the text field, that event will be processed by the text control and propagated to our frame. We will receive it in the process event method again and have to distinguish it from the regular events, so it's not being sent to the text field again, creating an infinite loop. That's why we use the last event variable, ensuring we don't send the same instance of an event twice. After running the program, we see that everything works fine. We can use the clipboard commands from the edit menu, which get correctly updated and grayed out when there is no selection in the focus text field. 
This works for both Linux and Windows. With the Mac OS handling these events correctly from the start, we now have completed our form with all the functionalities. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope it was helpful and I will see you in the next one.